Hey guys, my name is Ryan Nauman. I'm the editor in chief of radaronline.com, and I'm here on the Hollywood Raw podcast to talk about my run ins with Scientology and who I think the most difficult celebrity to work with is. Hey guys, welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page. Make sure you drop a comment, like, subscribe. Do all the fun things. Follow. Follow everything. We're here to entertain you guys. What are you waiting for? Hurry up, let's go. Enjoy. Ryan Nauman, what's up, Hi. buddy? Hi, guys. How are you, Dax? Oh, I'm so good. I'm so excited to have you on here. I mean, we talk to a lot of people in entertainment news, a lot of people who, number one, are either in front of the camera, behind the camera, or have made such an impact in entertainment. And you are one of those people. Um, you know, I met you years ago uh, at TMZ, but you weren't even out of school at that point. You started as an intern at TMZ and quickly rose through the ranks over there but take me back because i remember like i was at your college graduation you did come to to my college graduation (laughs) party um you know i uh i always wanted to work in entertainment so i knew that i had to get an internship somewhere so that was like Mm -hmm. the main reason i went to college i was just to get an internship to get my foot in the door um and i love shows like access hollywood and entertainment tonight i grew up with all that so um, I applied to a bunch of places uh, when I was in college, a sophomore, my second year. And I think TMZ called me back first. So I uh, went over there and yeah, uh, funny story. I actually showed up and I was supposed to do an interview, but uh, Tiffany, do you remember Tiffany? Yeah. I Are we allowed to name people? Of okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. She, I think like paperwork got messed up or whatever and they just gave me the internship, so. Um, that's how that all started. So I was in college working at TMZ full time. I started as an intern and then three months in, I broke a big story. We'll get into that. I think a little later, uh, the burglar bunch. And then Mm -hmm. he, he hired me as the weekend Harvey Levin. Uh, the boss at TMZ. Do you have to go into that? that much? (laughs) People know his name. Yeah. So, you know, I broke a big story and then I got hired and then I was, um, in charge of the weekends at TMZ, I uh, was going well, to here, here do this. Tell, tell yeah. us about because we've actually been talking a lot about the Burglar Bunch because Which, of the new by the way, ring yeah. show so good, on great documentary. Yes. So you watching this Netflix documentary about a story that you had a massive, massive part in? Like, break it down for me. What were you? What kind of stories were you breaking about the Burglar Bunch back then? Well, I always get mad that they never call me to be a part of these things, but what stories was breaking? Well, I was an intern and I became, I I think one of, Nick Prugo had gotten arrested already and I just, I started working on it. I saw this photo of Nick Prugo out and with Tess Taylor and Drake Bell, it's like this infamous photo. And I reached out to Tess and Nick and, um, we became friends over time and yeah, I mean, I kind of was connected with the majority of the burglar bunch at one point or another and they were just spilling everything that they did. (laughs) Um, They were all trying to turn on each other. So they were all very uh, ready to spill any secrets on the other people. Um, We were breaking lots of stories about the items they stole, they were pretty dumb at like wearing the items out. So we would get Facebook photos of them wearing, you know, Lindsay Lohan's necklace or whatever. So they wait, were, were, you, were you the media contact that was discussed during the Bling Ring documentary that they said they had a contact inside? They, were where? were yeah. you the person? They said at TMZ or where? No, on yep. the uh, Netflix documentary. Did they say they had a contact at TMZ? They said they, they had a TMZ oh, contact. Yeah. That was definitely me then. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> <that>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually reached out to Nick after uh, the documentary and we had a conversation. Yeah. So That's so on. good. And? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, he's still trying to make his way in Hollywood. <laughs> so how do you let's start from me how do you become friends with them like you know that at, during that time oh, God, Instagram uh, like how do you yeah, get in with them like how do you get in with those guys you know I think 
I think I just listen to people. I think that I approach people in a way that I tell them, like, I'm not going to be judgmental. Like, I totally have my own sins that, like, we can go over one day, you know, like, I I don't know why people talk to me. I think people just feel comfortable in a way. And I, uh, I don't have any judgment. I think, you know, I have my own past that we're not talking about on this podcast. But yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think, I don't know, I see people as human, so they just feel comfortable telling me secrets, I think. No, but how do you, how do you actually, like, get to them? How do you reach out to them? Well, that's, yeah, like, how how did you reach out? Facebook. Facebook was really big at the time. Not that it's not now, but (laughs) um, they were all pretty accessible. You know, I reached out to them on Facebook. I told them who I was. I may be revealing a little too much right now, but, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it really was just like, hey, this is, I'm Ryan, this is where I work. I love to tell your side of things. Um and get your story out there. Who Who is the biggest star that you reached out to that you just did a cold hit up and you were shocked they actually responded to you? <laughs> uh, Lindsay Lohan. Jesus. Yeah. Lindsay so Lohan. how do you get in touch with Lindsay? Do you DM her? Do you just Facebook mention? Like, how does that work? Um, well, I was still like in my first or second year at TMZ and uh she was like going through a bunch of arrests at the time i think she had already been arrested for two duis um sorry i look off what i'm thinking uh she had already been arrested for two duis i think she was being dropped from some movies and you know having a lot of drama she was like in and out of court for probation violations so she was like one of the hottest stories at the time um and she is now again too because she's making a comeback Mm -hmm. good spot later um but I started reaching out to her friends. I started reaching out to people close to her, her family members, her employees. Uh, You know, I talked to all of them. I was friends with all of them. I was breaking all these stories on her. And eventually I got her email and I wrote her a long email. And the gist of what she wrote back was basically like, I'm aware that you, I'm aware of who you are and like you talking to everyone in like the circle. And if you have any questions, just, you know, reach out to me instead (laughs) was she appreciative of having someone that she could get a new story out with that's what i'm curious of like not so much like uh, you know is that hard for her to go okay you're talking to all my friends but is it is it easy to go you know what i would like to be your source because i think that i can just get the right news out quicker uh i think that's part of it i think it definitely took time to create a relationship um i don't want to talk too much about her Mm -hmm. and like our personal relationship but i will say like after we connected in that email um she did help me a million times she came on tmz live when we needed her she was an incredible source and an incredible take that out (laughs) she was an incredible person um who helped me through many times throughout my career um Mm -hmm. What was the question? <laughs> How does she... No, I'm just curious if that's that's helpful. If they like the co- like someone oh, like Lindsay yeah. Lohan, if she likes the coverage or, or doesn't, you know, I'm just curious about For that. For sure, I think not even just her, but people in her world definitely like to have or have me as someone that can get out her side of things. And you know, I think at that time she was being vilified, and um, there's a lot of misogyny and sexism that were going on with the coverage of her trials and legal stuff and i think it definitely helped to have someone like me to be able to yeah. give her a voice Absolutely. yeah no yeah. that's i remember being on the streets and you know ryan you were just first of all great to work with but also like you. you know i remember doing like setup shots you know with dina and you were just talking to dina and it was just you know they, they spoke so highly of you and i think it was just good you know dina just trusted you and just knew that you came from you know, the right place where you weren't there to hurt them. You were, you were just more there to give them a platform. Yeah. And, uh, and I, yeah. And I just know they trust you. It's funny because I ran into Dina about, about a month and a half ago, I ran into Dina in New York city and it's just so funny to see her now than when it was like seven years ago when there was so much more shit of her going on. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like funny because we have the we actually have a good relationship now. It was because like we went through it together. Like right. at one point we didn't have a good relationship because <laughs> you know, I was the yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, I was the bad guy that had to cover the news stories, and now it's like we kind of both went through it together, and we could kind of look back and laugh, and uh, 
The other big like stories that you broke a shit ton of were the housewives. So I did, I, yes. many housewives. You were like stories. the first guy, like really covering the housewives. Thank like you. before I, I became. Tell myself that too. Yeah. No, and I, I'm not saying to kiss. Listen, if you're listening at home, I'm not kissing Ryan's ass. Like before, <laughs> Bravo became like the the Bravo Con, the successes today. Yes. Like Ryan was the first one to really put these people on the map and to cover them and say, no, these people are stars, not just reality mm-hmm. people. Yeah, one of the first. Let's not make me seem like that. No, the very no, first. I'm, take it, <laughs> Ryan. You're gonna, you're no. gonna put the label on it. All right, we'll take it. Um, yeah, you know, <laughs> housewives are crazy. I love housewives. Housewives always have drama, lawsuits. There's never, you know, you can search an entire cast of uh, a season and find ten different lawsuits. So, it's who's a, been your favorite housewife to cover throughout all of the years? My favorite housewife to cover. Uh, my favorite housewife is Nene Leakes, but my favorite housewife to cover is Erica Jane. Okay. Yeah. Why so, Erica? There's, there's a lot. Uh, you know, I think because I started to cover. Uh, do your listeners know about Erica Jane, or do I have to give them a little? Oh, sure, yeah, no, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So Erica Jane and her husband Tom Durati. Tom Durati is like the big lawyer. He's been sued a bunch. So a lot of my reporting is like legal reporting. It's court stuff. It's sources within the court. It's people tipping me off to lawsuits or finding them myself. Um, so Tom Durati was her husband or is her husband. Um, And I started to break a bunch of stories about him and his like legal troubles, like years before um, it started to become, it was on the show and it was public and all that. Uh, And he actually sent me a legal letter like in 2018 or 2019. And he basically was like, you have to apologize publicly or I'm going to take you to court and like sue you for everything in your company. And stuff like that really like motivates me to keep like digging on people. So um, I've really enjoyed this whole saga of like everything unfolding with. <laughs> did you, <laughs> not in, like, did you frame not that in, like, letter and way. send it back to him? <laughs> I did, I, you know, I have plans to frame it. Yes. And I don't know if he's like <laughs> mentally fit to read a letter right now but yeah uh that housewives yeah erica's the most interesting i also love that she has no sympathy for people it's just there's drama always yes do the housewives though similar to like the no similar to the bling ring are the housewives always telling on each other like does the drama stop when the cameras are rolling are they constantly like talking shit to each other from your experience you know, there's people, there is a theory, I work at Radar Online right now, and there's a theory going on uh, that one of them spoke to us recently about a story, so I'll have to be careful with what I say. Uh, but I will say in the past, I will say that when Real Housewives of Beverly Hills premiered, there was a housewife that spoke out and leaked a really big story about a fellow cast member, and that story was really big. And it kind of catapulted that show to where it is. And I, without saying the cast member, I'll just say it's a cast member that fans would never expect to have leaked that story. Hmm. Yeah. I like the blind items, Mr. <laughs> there Norman. You there you go. There's one for you. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, the catapulted. The, are you saying the success of the show was catapulted because of that? that I story? think that story definitely made people i think the show would have been a success either way but i think that story definitely propelled it to a level in the days before its premiere people can google and find out the story themselves but yeah. i'm thinking i'm thinking i'm like the story was, was the, about uh, denise richards and uh no she was there yet. it was about camille okay. it was the first season so it was a, the story was about camille but people could oh, do the first season the rest of their research I'm trying to remember because I, I actually used to watch Beverly Hills way back in the day because it was like you see all the, the spots in L.A., you, you know, it was right? Fun. Yeah. The story was yeah, about that's... Kelsey Grammer and Camille. So, OK. Yeah. All right. People can figure it out. Interesting. I like it. I like it. Um, do you feel that the housewives, they they like the PR that comes around them? Because in our experience, housewives enjoy a lot of press. Mm -hmm. So do you think that they are constantly looking for the next headline? And that's what makes them so interesting? (laughs) Is that what makes them interesting? Uh, I do think they are always looking for the next headline. I feel like that's 
most celebrities these days. Uh, I think that housewives are pretty thirsty for mm -hmm. a headline and to stay relevant and to get the next season. Lisa Renna is pretty thirsty right now. Um, yeah, they all, there's a need to stay relevant and to, you know, up the last season's drama always. Oh, I've got a question for you. Since ask, you have worked at <laughs> Daily Mail, TMZ, The Blast, Star, In Touch, Media Takeout, Boss Up, I'm just about everywhere. Yeah. What is the one outlet that if you say, I'm calling from so-and-so, yeah. you get the quickest response? <laughs> TMZ. Yeah? Yeah. Is it because people are <laughs> nervous or because it's so big? I think it... the. I think it changed over time. I think that people at first were nervous uh, and I've say, like if they didn't talk, I think they thought, you know, something would come out. And I think people just, the name itself was, and still is a big deal. Um, but I think now over the years, people like at first people were not willing, like they didn't want to talk. I mean, people would secretly talk for sure, but like there was that like, you know, snootiness about people that mm -hmm. they thought they were above TMZ. But I think now people definitely like to talk to not only TMZ, but everyone. It's definitely do changed in 15 years that I've been doing this. 100%. Do, yeah, when you call, do publicists, do they dislike you or do they like you or do they want to like, <laughs> keep it at arm's distance? Yeah, how does that work? And how do you balance that kind of relationship? You know, I... There is some publicists that, and no, let me start over. Uh, there's many publicists that I love. I think they're great. Uh, I think the smart publicists understand that like working with the outlets is a lot easier than, you know, fighting against them. Um, I love public, there's like, I, the thing is I can name like 10 that are great, but let's say the rest are pretty, you know, they don't love getting a call from me. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, so what we've talked about is that our experience, and this is this is Adam and I. This is not. Yes. This is you excluded from this. Okay. We have a frustration with publicists because they become this like gatekeeper that they don't have as much power as they used to because of the invention of social media. Correct. And so back in the day you would have a story, you'd have to go through the publicist to get to the star, to get a comment, to put it back, to publish it. So there was this gatekeeper thing that they had power. Yes. I feel that they've lost a lot of that power now because your star can just go and tweet something out and then it goes to everyone and no, there's no exclusivity, there's nothing out there. Yes. And so they're trying to hold on to that power that they, they used to have. Yes. Uh, I'll say when I was, I'll say for the majority of my career, uh, when sources were the celebrities themselves, uh, I would also get calls from their publicists being like, can you stop talking to so-and-so? Mm -hmm. I got that so much Yeah, too. because like, I don't know how to do this after when you're publishing this. And, you know, I'd be like, sorry. <laughs> like, I'm not going to stop yeah. talking to the person. Um, but also like, I, I also feel like the celebrities would do that when the publicist wasn't really effectively doing their job or like mm -hmm. handling the mess that whatever it was. So yeah, I definitely think publicists are losing their grip on the industry. How, how <laughs> All often are gonna hate me now after this conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one's ever gonna answer my email again. That's not true because you know what? People still want the yeah, press. That's, that's what I've learned. I've learned throughout the years, no matter how mad you can make publicists, they come back when they need the press. Well, here's the thing is you're like, you know, now you're the head of radar. So you do have some, I don't want to say power, but you, you do have editorial, you know, you do have some editorial power as far as when it comes to what's going to be on the site or what goes in in an article. As the editor in chief of radar, how often would you say like something cr comes across your desk that you're just like, I'm going to bury, I'm not going to do anything with it? <laughs> well, then I'm going to bury. Uh, never, never bury if there's something that is about children, like I read a lot of court documents. So I read a lot of divorce records. I read a lot of uh, civil lawsuits, federal, and there can be a lot of sensitive subjects with kids or families or um, medical stuff. I, I so do not bury. so much of a, so not so much of a bury, but more of a, 
massage you're not the story. Cover. You're not going to be the outlet yeah. to cover that story is what it sounds like. I'm cognizant of the information that I'm putting out into the world. And while a lot of it is scandalous and, uh, you know, a certain tone, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, there are boundaries for sure. What, what's the biggest story you've ever personally broken? Because I know you've worked with, obviously, uh, you broke a lot of like Charlie Sheen and Brooke Mueller stuff back in the day. Yeah. Uh, God, was... I mean, I could go through a thousand stories that you've broken, but what do you personally feel like is that that big one? I really, I go back to the Burger Bunch just because I think it like started my career. And I think that's why I'm here today talking to both of you. Um, yeah. But more so because just... you... You were the weekend editor at TMZ, and it was oh, like okay. the well, biggest we'll stories on the weekend would would <laughs> yes, break. Yes, I yes, mean, yes. So, so like, we, yeah. So I literally, when I started TMZ, they needed a weekend producer, and it worked with my school schedule because I was going three days there, and then or five days at TMZ, two days at school. Um, and celebrities like to die on the weekends. So <laughs> they like to die. <laughs> they do. It's uh it's a pattern. It, it you know, I think people like to party on the weekends. So mm-hmm. I think people usually go a little crazy. Uh the biggest stories, and I think I could be totally wrong, but I think the timeline, the first like six months of my time working alone on the weekends with Daniel Goldblatt, who was my boss there. Um was like Brittany Murphy died. We got a call in the tip line and I could have literally been my second week there. And we got information from someone that she had just passed. And I was like, no fucking way. I was like, this is not true. So like, I was like working on it. Mm-hmm. And then we got another call uh, that confirmed it. So that happened. And I think a couple, I could totally be wrong. Whitney Houston died. So these are like some pretty massive stories that I mean Whitney that yeah. was that one was huge. Ryan Satin, I'll give him a little shout out. He actually got the tip that she had passed away. Mm-hmm. Um so that was I think on a Saturday. That might have been one of the biggest stories that I worked on. Um You did Winehouse too, yeah? Winehouse too was on a Saturday or Sunday. Brittany Murphy was Saturday or Sunday. And these days and then- are filled with you know, sending cameramen to the house where they died. I was making calls to the Beverly Hills Hilton for hotel for Whitney Houston. Uh, you know, finding the one the, the one that I re- I remember but, that you fucked over my Thanksgiving was Charlie. Was, or no, no, Tiger Woods. It was Tiger Woods. Tiger I remember Woods. I I literally had just sat down to Thanksgiving dinner. And your ass called me to buy a whole bunch of photos. I was all, it must have been nice to be at home with your family on Thanksgiving. <laughs> because I wasn't at home. <laughs> well, that's where it ended because the rest of the time I was worried about Tiger Woods. Yeah, that was and, a rough uh, one. Uh, yeah, that was like Thanksgiving or the day before or whatever when he crashed mm-hmm. his car. And he, yep. Elon ran after him with the golf club allegedly. And we got, yeah, you got the photos of the, didn't you buy the photos? Um, it was the crash that? site. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was all literally the, the crash site. Super though. famous photos. Yeah, that, that that was crazy. So that was, I remember, uh, I remember uh, that one going down. That one was crazy. See, like all these things happen on the weekend. That one also was they're involved. A, can I go off on little tangents or is that cool? Yeah, sure. Okay. Go for it. We want to hear your tangents. Uh, okay. So that day it was me, Gary, Trock, and like Harvey, and somehow Harvey had. Literally, we had very little information, and somehow Harvey had been like, this is what happened. And it literally was what had happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it also involved, I somehow got Rachel Yucatel's number. And I think I had been speaking to her because she had been accused of having an affair with David Boreanaz before Tiger Woods. Um, so I was talking to her about that. And then I, I remember we had like sent cameramen or someone had sent cameraman an agency or something. And I called her and I was like, Hey, like, just so you know, like the story's breaking about you. And also like, there's a hundred paparazzi outside your house right now. And she was like, you're fucking kidding me. And she opened her window and there was a hundred fucking paparazzi out there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was lots of weird stories. Like, you know, talking to Rachel, you could tell and working with you to buy crash photos of Tiger Woods. Right. 
crash. Some yeah. crazy ass times, man. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. So Ryan, yes, when when someone dies like that, who? You, don't tell me yeah. the story. Don't yeah. tell me the story. But like, who are the tipsters usually? Um, you know, they vary. They could be someone close to them. It could be, uh, and this isn't me specifically talking about TMZ. This is 15 years of working for every other outlet and whatnot. But a lot of people, you know, expect some sort of, I don't know, back in the day, people expected money. I think people now expect infamy from their tips or some sort of fame from their tips. But it could be their family I think people, member. <laughs> I think at the core of it, people like to gossip and they want to be the one part of to it. tell the news to someone else. And they want to be the one who was behind breaking the story on a massive outlet. I think yeah. there is some kind of pride behind it. No, I think people love to tell people, their friends, their family, that they were the one responsible for that story. Yeah. Or even so they could go on Twitter or Instagram or, you know, talk about it and get some followers whatever <laughs> it's the world we live so in. so i you guys uh over at radar are doing a, a story on matt lauer oh god doing a book <laughs> okay what do you know so far about this book because let's, let's give that, that story is oh well yeah. you guys are doing a story so can you give us anything any little tidbits um what to go. look out for because that that's going to be a huge book <laughs> um i can just say sources are saying that he's ready to you know call everyone out that uh, has not had his back in the last couple of years. So do you think this is going to be a book to take people down? I don't think he's a very happy individual at the moment. I think a lot of sources say uh, he feels betrayed by some of his friends, you know, but I think what he forgets, like there was allegations of sexual assault and, you know, there's some heavy stuff there. So we'll see. So does he have a deal with a publisher? I don't know that. Okay. Yeah. I think what I would want to know from him is what did he think of the morning show? That's literally because I was about to mention the morning show. Yeah. Because that literally a was portrayal. obviously based on him and his relationship on. I, and I would say loosely because there's a lot of other aspects that were not about him or not about you know his life, but I think that that show was written around his debacle. Yeah. Um, so curious to see what he thought of that show. I, know <laughs> I like that you pulled it. that and, story out, Dax. And where has he been? Because he's he's been really good about kind of hiding away. Well, he has that girlfriend. I don't remember her name. She's in. She works in PR. She, yeah, she's a publicist. Uh, think, yeah, she's a big publicist. She's a big deal. He's in the Hamptons. There's not really cameras yeah, in the Hamptons, you know? That's, that's what we know. He's just out there hanging out, you know? But can you imagine, like, think about what that does to your ego when you were on top of the fucking world <laughs> making 30 million dollars a year yeah you Let's were in it, everywhere you walked down the streets of new york everyone loved you and You're then like it just bad, yeah. switched like that and now you can't go out in public like that really has to mess with your mind yeah i mean it probably messed with the the women he sexually assaulted minds too but i mean uh yeah i don't feel too bad for him did you? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's a pretty bad person. <laughs> I, 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 just, I don't oh, know. No, I, yeah, I honestly no, I don't, don't know like him personally yet. at all. So uh, I, I don't know what I think he what he's like. I've heard the stories, but I don't know what he's like personally. I think he's definitely like pretty sad about how everything went down. Yeah. That's what we're told. Crazy. What are your thoughts? You know, obviously you're a, an established editor, writer, uh, you know, journalist. But what are your thoughts on like accounts like Dumois? I love I love Dumois. I love that so you are, said the name first, so I didn't have to say the name because I butcher it every time. But <laughs> yeah, it, it. but is it like uh, you know? Do you find it to be factual? But also, do you find yourself taking stories for them for your own site, like citing them, or how does it work? Yeah, for you? we definitely. I definitely check uh, their Instagram account. You know, they have good scoops a lot of the time. Uh, we definitely yeah, I agree. them. You know, if there's like a tip that we see that they have, I, I mean, I fucking love them. Uh, yeah. I think that's like the new way that people leak stories is like through sites like that. Um, we definitely, you know, when we see something interesting, we'll definitely work on it. We'll, you know, and always credit them within our stories. We were really good at that. Um, and they're really, I think they've picked up a couple of our stuff, you know, the love is mutual. 
Yeah, no, they she, she, they she does a great job. They yeah, you know, I love the sightings. I love the Sunday podcast? sightings. We've done their podcast yeah. twice yeah. now, and it's just I don't know. I as a New Yorker, I just love to see like where people are going in New York. It's sort of like to see like the trending spots. Yeah, in a way, no. it's not even just celebrities, but the trending spots. But also, I feel like in some ways they've made celebrities. You know, they're like a a Sydney Sweeney. I feel like they're the ones who threw gas on her fire. You know, and they kind did. of made her also- into a star. Greg from Succession. He's always out Greg, there making dude, out with people. Yeah, I love that. Another it. one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What, I love uh, little tidbits like that. Sorry. It's stuff like that Radar can't really publish, like Greg running around New York making out with girls. Like, that's a great story. So, yeah, Dumont's have, amazing. You know, you being a journalist, and obviously there's so many stories about Scientologists, have you had any experiences <laughs> dealing with them over the years? Uh, you know, I just finished watching the 30 Hours of Leah Remini's special for the second time. Um yeah, we've had some crazy Scientology stories. Um, when I was working on the Katie Holmes divorce, let's be really careful because they like to sue everyone. So um, yeah, we were right. working on the Katie Holmes divorce. There were people within her circle that wanted it to be known that this was after she had filed for divorce. I think you also had, I mean, we can get into it, Adam. I think you knew some people within this world too. Uh, maybe not, but... You're not giving any sort of poker face, so I can't. (laughs) No. (laughs) I'm like looking at your face for a reaction, but okay. Um, So there were people in her world that basically wanted it known that she did not think the best option for Surrey was to be raised in Scientology. And that was published, so that's not like anything groundbreaking or new or shocking to anyone on or the shocking planet. to okay. anyone that knows or you know uh anything about the alleged accusations from the church um okay so we were working on a bunch of katie Holmes stuff this was also the weekend because i think they filed on a friday which also just made the weekends even more hectic once <laughs> the story broke on friday but that um, what people don't know is that is a massive trick that a lot of PR yes. and publicists know is you file late on a Friday yes. so that by that time, most people have checked off. They're not looking online. They're they're going along with their weekend or they're hoping that it just kind of gets buried under the pile and it never comes out. But you, you don't get as much traction on a Friday as you would get on a Monday. Correct. Yeah. And you hope it just dies off over the weekend. I mean, but Katie Holmes divorcing Tom Cruise, obviously. I mean, they can try all they want, but the story's not really going to die off. Um, so, yeah, we were breaking a bunch of stories that weekend about it. People within her world were kind of talking to us. Um, we did a story about the Sea Org. Mm-hmm. Um, the church had issues with how it was framed. Um, and I believe the day after on that Monday, (laughs) the alleged representatives from the church of Scientology showed up to the office, uh, to talk about, you know, what we were publishing. I was not in the meeting. I don't know what was discussed. I don't know if they came inside. I know they showed up. I've had some weird interactions with. Scientology. Like I remember when Katie and Tom were actually having Surrey, yes. like showing up to the Celebrity Center in Hollywood because that was one of the spots that people thought she was giving birth at. Because it was kind of like that day, no one knew was she giving birth at the Scientology Center? Was she giving birth at a hospital? Was she giving like yeah. no one knew? Was it at home? And so I went by there and I pulled up and there was like five people on my car immediately exactly. just knowing that I shouldn't be in the area. Do you refrain from covering Scientology stories because they can be a bit more aggressive or at least like wanting to shut down stories? <laughs> I think there's something in me that just doesn't like a bully. And I think that's kind of like what led me to this job in many ways. So or it doesn't like someone that's trying to like hide the truth in a way or, you know, cover up things. So no, it doesn't. Uh, and that's not just Scientology or, you know, uh, that's anyone. So no, it doesn't um, scare me. 
Mm-hmm. I've never been sued. So. But you are talking very cryptically <laughs> about this story, which makes me think there's a little bit of fear well, in there. Well, you know, with a story like science, with top with Scientology stories, you definitely have to be aware that they are litigious uh, and you have to, um, you know, I think for any story, you are very careful and, you know, reach out for comment and all that. But I just think with a Scientology story, because they love to go to court and they have really expensive lawyers, I think, yeah, I think anyone, not just me or Radar or TMZ, you just have to really be careful. Yeah. Isn't the worst? Feel that. It's like you want to just do your job because it's actually a good story, but you have to worry about them just kind of, <laughs> even though the story could be true, it's just like you have to worry about the lawsuit. And you, listen, at the end of the day, they just want, they want, they have so much money, they just want to cost you money. Yeah, exactly. I, I would say that 20%, I think people with power are able to, you know, kill 20% of stories out there mm-hmm. over time. Yeah. They, yeah. Not just Scientology, I think powerful loyal or lawyers, managers, people influence studio heads we have can I, can I give another blind item i have a good blind item oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. bring it on all right so the daughter of a legendary actor i'm not going to say where i was working because then we won't be able to run it but the dodger daughter of a legendary actor who is an actress herself okay i had mm-hmm. sources tell me and i confirmed with other people that she had checked into rehab okay 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 the place that I worked at the time uh, was owned by another company um, who had a uh, financial interest with the actor. Okay. Uh, and that story was killed. Yeah. So stuff like that. Mm. There's stuff like that goes on in Hollywood. Hollywood, you know, Hollywood, I feel, Hollywood's really I feel... gross when we get down to it. I feel like that kind of crap happens All a lot yeah. because they go, who's who's got the most money? Who's got a, the, a lot to lose out of this? Just make it go away because it's going to hurt the company. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, There's a lot of money I think on the line. Yeah. A lot of money on the line. And I feel like that is a very common thing to happen in the in the industry. And Adam and I have talked about this a lot, how, you know, a lot of people don't realize that paparazzi get some wild ass photos sometimes that don't actually ever get pitched to outlets because they go to the celeb first and say, do you want to buy this yeah, it's so not. that you have it rather than the outlets have it? Yes, and a lot of that kind of stuff gets scooped up and disappears off the marketplace. It's not extortion. I've learned this through learning of stories like that it's not extortion if you like frame it the right way or not blackmail yep. or whatever so and that's the thing it's like the photos out there for a lot of these people like the photos out there and personally if i had a really scandalous photo i would be like yeah please oh, offer it to yeah, me first rather than, yeah, for sure. than an outlet like, like tell you me know? the number yeah yeah exactly i well Adam, that how many photos out there of you have you had to buy back i guess is the question oh my God. <laughs> no so fucking many get out of here i actually so had a many. i had a video recently that um i i i called the people and i said mm-hmm. listen i have this and i just want a better relationship you know and i was like i didn't even ask for money um because I, I was afraid of that like they think i'm extorting them so mm-hmm. i wanted to make sure this is not money i just want to let you know that I'm doing the right thing by you and going forward. I hope you respect me and kind of give me your time and be good to me. Yeah. So, um, did it help? I don't know. We'll see. It's still, it's still soon. We'll <laughs> I'm see. So you were arrested or? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you this. But right. How do we, yeah, well, well, just speaking of like a Tom, Tom Cruise and Surrey, do you find that yeah. as far as you know, Surrey has not seen her dad. Oh my God. So there was literally, a, he literally sued a magazine over this allegation. So I, as far as I know, I haven't seen any photos of him with her, but I don't know if they're hanging out or not. He sued Life and Style or something. It was a big lawsuit. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Let's not get into Tom Cruise. <laughs> uh, my question for you is... I'm all, Tom Cruise is also you... gay. So I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh, I was like, what? <laughs> I mean, he is. Uh, I can't say that, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do you have any deets on Gigi and Leo? This is probably one of the biggest stories. Everyone's been talking about it, whether or not they are together, not together. What do you know about them? 
What do I know about them? I, you know, I think I don't know anything more than other people have reported besides they've been hanging out a bunch and they're getting close. It seems very manufactured to me. I'll just say that. Seems very. A lot of people are saying that. Convenient, given the Zayn Malik stuff and the drama with the family, and you know, she was kind of. I mean, she's the hottest thing out there, but she. I mean, she needed a little boost, maybe. Um, the the part that I still can't get over is Leo dating a, a woman with a small child. Oh, that I thought, to I thought me, you meant and I know she's it's, older. <laughs> I mean, no, the, child, the, the older, but... no, because I feel that because she is the hottest thing out there, that yeah. trumps her age. But I'm having a hard time with the other part of it just because Leo is such like, a, I want to travel the world. I want to do whatever the hell I want. I want that woman in my life to come and go wherever I want to go. Yeah. And that is not possible when you have a small child. There's a lot of factors that play in when you are a parent that you can't just get up and travel around the world because everyone will look at her and be like, what, what the fuck, you you're a terrible mom. You're not with yeah. your kids anymore. Like, it becomes a whole thing and I just, I would be very surprised if this is a real relationship if that's the case. I think that's a really valid, great point, Dax, that you have thought of. Uh, it, well, I have two children <laughs> I and I can't say, just get up and go to Sandro Pay tomorrow. <laughs> you are a dad. Um, uh, my gut says that this is manufactured for promotion, but maybe promotion. I'm just, no. I know they're, they're the biggest few out there. You wouldn't think that people like that need promotion. Right. Um, but I think there's a lot more of that going on than you would, you would know. Hmm. So when you mean manufactured, do you think it's on one side? I don't want to like go on the record, but yeah, I think like <laughs> there could be big projects that they both have coming up or, you know, he wants to appeal to a younger demographic or not that he's not already, but you know, Gigi is the biggest thing out there. So, you know, it's always good to be next to the hottest starlet. Um, yeah. I'm cynical that I've been doing this for 15 years. I don't, I don't really believe anything. That's I, out no, there. I, <laughs> I get a, it. There's a, we've seen a million stories go through where, you know, the couple is solely there yeah. for PR um, a lot of those have been Taylor Swift relationships, allegedly. Um, <laughs> wow. But... <laughs> Naming names. Okay. But but nevertheless, I think that it does work. We've seen it work. People are interested in couples. Mm -hmm. It just is always surprising to me when it is a massive, massive star that they would need to do a PR type move like this. I've been thinking about this a lot lately, actually. I think there's like several out there right now that in my gut it says... Don't ask me to name names, but I think that that's going on a lot. I think couples yeah. are like the new way to get PR, becoming a couple. I feel it. Yeah. Yeah. What's the, what's the cra <laughs> Let me, when it goes to me, sees me trying to talk. Uh, first of all, what's I, I always ask the question. So this is fucking weird. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? I'm like, is this like a therapy session? That's on Wednesday. That's tomorrow. I don't know what the fuck is <laughs> what's the uh what's the craziest photos you've ever seen across your desk and you don't have to tell me the names because they're yeah. probably some of them they never went out but just tell me like what was actually happening in the photos um, or video. sex <laughs> um the craziest thing that happened in the video uh like do you see a lot of sex uh, sex do you get a lot of sex tapes a lot of sex tapes not so much anymore uh murder Whoa. Yeah, we yeah, there's been some murder on camera that is rough. Yeah, is that does that fit the? Is that is that crazy? Yeah, enough? I mean or? that's fucking crazy. Yeah. I didn't even know that. I'm like, you've never Jesus. seen any murder across your desk in your time as photo? No. No. Oh, it was a weekend no. again, a weekend thing. So it's just yeah. <laughs> lots of murders. Yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, no, no murder on my desk. I'm gonna do something juicy. Yeah, hold on. Craziest thing. Can it be a video? Yeah, Anything? sure. Mm. Drugs. Lots of drugs. Oh, lots of drugs. Let's say this. Let's say I'll give another blind item. An A-list, an A-list celebrity smoking crack out of a tin foil. Does that? Oh shit. Okay, with a hooker. Oh shit! Is hooker a bad word? I'm sorry. S no, 
Oh, I'm oh. <laughs> if this podcast gets me canceled, I swear to fucking God. An S part is what I meant. <laughs> That's of all things he's worried about. He's like, there's a very 90s word. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think people are coming out and saying you can't say hooker. I'm pretty sure that okay. that word is still it's within usable? the. It's Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, right. I think we're good with that one. Yeah. Does that answer How, okay. the question, or do, do you think? That yeah. Is, okay. No, I, that's, that's lots of good stuff there. Okay. Here's what I want to know. Yeah. Out of your professional opinion. Yeah. Give me a ratio on how often celebs are calling the media themselves versus someone else, in their camp or whatever. Hmm. It's changed over time. I would say now it's probably like 50-50. I think when I started, it was probably more like 20, 80. Yeah. It's become a lot more common. Yeah. I think... I think, like you, I, I think it's not as taboo to talk to the media like it used to be. No. I mean, back in the day, people just... I mean, people were scared and they definitely would want to talk to you, but people would also hang up on you. I mean, people didn't want to talk um and i think now with social media like you hinted at and all that i think people are just definitely more of an open book and wanting to share every detail of their life um which i find completely odd but whatever whatever people want to do with their life (laughs) i love it when um yeah who is the hard from your experience who is this the hardest celebrity to deal with the one the camp that always gives you issues it's just always a hassle Kelly Ripa. Really? Yeah. Kelly yeah. Ripa. Well, I mean, Scientology is, is pretty awful as an institution, but I would say, you know, you write a story about Kelly Ripa. Wait, is Kelly a Scientologist? No, I'm just saying, like, they're awful. Oh, and, oh, oh. Uh, sorry, yeah, glad we cleared that up. They're awful to deal with with stories. And then also, you have people like Kelly Ripa who, you know, People love her, the, so the it's weird rough part to is, talk about her. But and I'm sure. But she, I feel like she's an open book. So it's it's. I always find that interesting when someone who's literally life is on display right? every single day would have an issue. Um, she's very. Uh, I like her team, so I'll be careful. Uh, there's mm-hmm. just. She's, uh, we're told she's very particular about how stories are framed about her, allegedly. And there can be many phone calls. And this has spanned years. This isn't one place. This isn't anything. Um, They're very uh, picky about the word choice for headlines, how stories are framed, photo choices. Is this gonna be the headline of the fucking YouTube? Kelly Rip is a Kelly Rip is a fucking bitch. Yeah, that's it says Ryan Nauman. Yeah, exactly. She- <laughs> I swear to God. Editor in chief of Radar <laughs> Online. Uh you know, she could be rough, but you know, I also get it. Um people like yeah. to have some sort of control over the narrative. What can you tell us about the Brad and Angelina stuff going on? You know, is it is it that these people these two hate each other? They do hate each other. I, you know, I'm going to take Brad's side. I think that everything that I'm told is he kind of feels like this has been handled in the past. This has already been through police and the FBI and all the law enforcement agencies. And she just continues to kind of drag it out in the courts and this new lawsuit where she's trying to like seek records from the investigation that has already been closed which now includes today, if you've seen, it has a bunch of new allegations about him choking the kid and, you know, and whatnot. It, it is wild to see how much of this, like, Angelina is either perpetuating, leaking herself. Like, that to me is wild when you've got a massive A-list star. Doing all that stuff. Putting yeah. this out. It's like, it sounds, it's very vindictive. Like It feels very vindictive. And again, I don't, I'm, I don't know what she went through. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, I, I, I don't know their inner workings of their personal life. Yeah. And if she feels that she needs to get this out, um, I, I can't talk to that. All I can say is that what I have seen so far, it's, it's shocking that she would personally go to the links that she's going to, to just smother his name. 
Yeah, again, we I will also agree that we weren't in the plane or on the plane um, or in their relationship with them. Um, yep. But it does seem, you know, either she went through something and she literally is just, you know, she wants the world to know about it or she is a very vindictive but person. <laughs> how big of a bowl of popcorn does Jennifer Aniston have right now? <laughs> she just loves it. <laughs> eating it all. <laughs> I love Jen Aniston. You know, she's just no, loving she it. She probably actually doesn't like it because yeah. she likes Brad at the end of the day. So she probably doesn't love She all probably is so focused crap. on her money and counting her money that she is not worried about Brad and Angelina. Well, Mr. Ryan Nauman, thank you so it's much. It's over. For this was Hollywood amazing. Thank you guys. Dude, but we're going to have you back. So like don't get comfortable. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to we're going to have you back. Okay. Have no fear. Great. I was very excited about this episode because like I said before, you you kind of have done it all. You know all the people, you know all the stories and I like hearing your war stories. It's thank really you. fun and I know that Probably now that we've cracked the top open, you're going to go home um, and just think about a shit ton more of them Definitely. and write them down so you can bring them back to the podcast. Sounds good. I'm down. Yes. So thank you again for joining us. And if yes. you want to follow Ryan, you can follow him on social media. He's at Ryan Nauman. And uh, check out, uh, yeah, what, what else do you want people to check out? Obviously, plug. Radar yeah, go Online. Go to Radar Online, read the news every day. Yeah. I don't have a podcast, so don't worry. Nothing to plug. <laughs> 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 Not yet. <laughs> Well, thank you guys. Well, this was thank very you easy. Again, Ryan. Thank you for popping my cherry with podcasts, and this was lovely. No, no problem. And hopefully, Kelly doesn't get too mad about this headline that we're going <laughs> to. I hope we don't get sued. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fun. Thanks, guys. Dude, I love Nauman. He Great dude. Great guy. Love hearing Kelly Ripa. Um, there's, there's just a lot of takeaways from this. Um, I don't know. It's one of those conversations where, for me, I I would. It's so weird. Like as a listener, it could be mm-hmm. very exhausting to hear stuff that you can't. We can't say names. It's for legal reasons. We know the truth. You know, there are full podcasts devoted towards blind items, so I don't feel that that is a negative. I think it intrigues people, and they want to try to figure it out. And honestly, I, that's not our mo. We like to name names, but sometimes you just can't because you don't want a lawsuit. Yeah, it's like yeah, we don't make enough money to afford the lawsuit. So <laughs> yeah, you guys want us to name people, then we're gonna make a Patreon and, and charge you guys twenty thousand a month just to afford, <laughs> and that's to afford the lawyers. But uh, Ryan's been in the mix of things for a long time. I mean. The stuff I used to go to, Ryan used to call me and like send me to the Hamptons to go shoot Lindsay Lohan and Dina Lohan, and it was exhausting. But I, I mean, I, Dax, I've told you the worst thing years ago. It was terrible when I would see photos of Lindsay Lohan in New York City because you knew something was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, I remember one night I knew something was going to happen. She gets arrested at a club. I'm at the, I got to wake up in the middle of the night. Because she's got arrested. It was just a wild thing. But Norman, a mess, dude. And he was all over all those stories. Yeah. Just nonstop. He, he was the guy breaking fucking everything. He changed the game by being like a real voice for them, though, and kind of developing that relationship for them during a very hostile time. So shout out to Ryan Norman for coming on the podcast. Thank you guys for listening to the podcast. Leave a review, five stars, say a few kind words. We'll actually read your review live you need on to air. Know where. Head on over to iTunes, find Hollywood Raw, scroll to the bottom. You'll see all the other reviews there. You push the five star, you leave a little comment so that we can read it like we did at the top of the show. We just want to say thank you. That's right. Follow me at, at Adam Glynn, G-L-Y-N. Follow Hollywood Raw Podcast on Instagram, Hollywood Raw Pod, P-O-D. We're on TikTok, we're on Twitter, Facebook. Shout out to the private Facebook group where you guys are talking, not just to us, but among each other. Because I just like reading your conversations. Dude, um, which this, are really fun. This Facebook group has become so legit. I love it. Uh, and if you want to be a part of it, you got to find it. It's called Off the Record. You find Hollywood Raw, then you'll find Off the Record. And yeah, you have to request to be submitted. We don't let any, any, you know, any junk. We let in the cool people. Yes. So come. Uh, and we, uh, you got to answer a couple questions. We'll let you in. And then you can be a part of our inner circle of people that... Uh, Ask the other questions that we can't talk about here on the podcast yeah. or just want to ask a random question of us. And that's where we're answering them. Follow Dax at at Dax Holt. We'll see you guys next time. What's up, guys? If you like that video, there's plenty more that came from. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell so we can just feed you all the goodness daily. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go. Let's <laughs> go.